Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to start doing some watercolor practice in this cute little notebook that I just got in from Hobonichi. This is part of the Hobonichi 2021 line. Um, the artist that made this is called Roji Arai. His little card is inside of it. And so I bought the cover from Hobonichi and then I got the Hobonichi papers inside. So I thought this paper would be perfect just for practicing some watercolor techniques. Um, it is not the Tomoe River paper that is found in their planners. This is just a super, super smooth um, paper. So we'll see how it takes to watercolor. I've never tried watercolor on this particular paper before. Um, in here, I think when I put this, I showed it to you, but... This has a little sticker pad of double of double stick tape. So if I decide to put some little items in it, I can. So the idea with this is to practice some basic brush strokes with the various new brushes that I have for watercolors. So I get used to the brushes, to their widths and uh, what they're like. So I'll just demonstrate what I'm practicing. Um, one of my favorite YouTube videos to follow for this has been with Wendy, I think her name is Wendy Froche. I'll link her website below. Um, she has really great um, tutorials. She's a teacher, she's a graphic artist. She's done everything in the art industry, all the way up to book illustration and um, director for licensing. So she's very experienced and it was just really nice to see some things on her YouTube channel. So I'll make sure to link that below. Um, this is just gonna be for practicing. Now, those of you that were concerned that I didn't buy a cover on cover, have no fear, my cover on cover has arrived for it. So I'll be setting uh, this up and starting with the strokes. Now, in these uh, fo this following little series, it's probably going to be almost like, um, clips of maybe a certain type of stroke that I'm practicing and with brushes and then I'll do like a page with that brush stroke kind of like abstract and then I figured it would be a good way to use up a lot of this washi stickers that I have so this was a really cute print of washi that I found last year and I just hadn't used it up but as you can tell there is a ton so I know I have plenty in here to share as well. So um, I'll make up some little kits and post them in my store. If any of you are interested in buying them, I'll try to send them in just like a letter envelope uh, to keep the shipping costs down. And um, I just have a few of these washi tapes that I know I'm not gonna be completely using up all by myself. So I'd be happy to share them since I don't see myself making 30 spreads of the same girls <laughs> over and over all fall. But who knows, let's see how much practice I can get done. All right, well, let's turn the camera around and start practicing with our watercolor brushes. So here I'll start by unwrapping this um, cover on cover from Hobonichi. Again, this uh, bird cover is from the Hobonichi 2021 line. Uh, they were just released in September. And um, so I got the little Hobonichi Papers book in a size A6 to also fit inside of this cover. Um, so I'm curious to see how this paper will hold up to watercolor since it is not the typical Tomoe River paper. And um, this back pocket has like a Ziploc and by having this, I can still access the back pocket where I put this little card from Red Aspen when someone said, I lived in a fantasy land, I almost fell off my unicorn. So those are the nails I'm wearing. If you're curious about my nails in most of my videos, I get them from Red Aspen. I'll post my affiliate link below if you're interested in those. Okay, so from here, I'm going to try out my brand new Princeton Neptune brushes. So these are in a size two round, six round, 10 round, and three fourth inch flat, along with this Jane Davenport um, palette. This one is called the Glitz C palette. I use a little pipette and just add a little bit of water to each one of these. Um, my daughter was using them and 
I will obviously need to clean up my yellow there a little bit, but that's the nice thing about watercolors. You just reactivate them with some water and they'll clean out just fine. Um, the only thing I did notice with some of the, them being so close together, I have to make sure that the water doesn't pool together or the two colors will want to mix and blend together. So I'll be using this first sticker here and I'm just going to use some um, EK Success scissors to fussy cut out the portions that I want. I know I'm gonna keep that yarn ball and, um, and the little splatters. And then I think I'll use one of these florals. In the end, I decided not to use the girl. I just went with this particular washi just to cover up the random bird on the bottom. And I'm going to use the colors out of the Glitzy palette that uh, match these leaves. So I'm going to try out this number two. And the idea here is to figure out how, learn how to use the thinnest part of the brush by just barely touching on the tip and seeing what types of thicknesses we can get. So now I'm pushing down a little bit harder to get a little bit thicker, and now I'm going very thin again. So that's the thinnest stripe I can get, and then this is the thickest stripe I can get with my number two round. So I'm gonna try this with various colors, just going in various directions.
To separate the backing of my washi tape uh, from the sticker backing, I use this little picking tool that I have from my Cricut and it helps make that easy separation. Now this is the Princeton Neptune size six. And what I'm doing with this is practicing the press down. So you start with a very light touch on the tip and then push hard and then come back up and push hard, come back up, push hard, come back up, push hard. So on the next round, I'm also going to twist, twist, push down, twist, push down, twist, push down, twist. So this kind of helps with like leaves and plants. This particular motion is used a lot. Um, you can also kind of make waves. To me, this one kind of looks like seaweed. <laughs> so again, push and twist, push, twist, push, twist, push, twist. And um, it can give you a feel on how you can make some little leaves, especially if you lift it up completely, then um, you would get you know, the, the look that feels like leaves. So again, these are the Princeton Neptune. This is the round brush in a size six uh, with those same pink colors. So then I also uh, use the side of the brush and see how thick of a look I can get by just using the, the side. So you can see what a variety of thicknesses you can get out of one brush just by the amount of pressure that you put. So um, I skipped from a four to a size six, and so you can see the difference between the two over to the six. A lot of artists use either a four or a six um, for their total painting, especially when it's a small size like this A6 paper. What really impressed me about this paper is it did not leak through. I was pretty heavy. The Neptune brushes are pretty thick with water. Now I'm using some Memento ink and I think it's like a brown cocoa. This is a Studio Calico stamp, date stamp, also with a hexagon design and I just stamp my date in there. So I'm going to do something similar with this next one along with circles. So here I'm using the 3 4 inch flat brush from Princeton Neptune and I'm holding it in the center and just holding it perpendicular to the page and twisting it in a full circle. So this one was pretty thick and I wasn't sure how well the paper would hold up so I went ahead and picked up some of that excess paint uh, and water with a little edge of a tiny piece of paper towel. Um, as I made those. And then I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of yellow. Now I did notice that the yellow in this particular palette is pretty grainy, or I just did not have it mixed in well enough. So I'll come back in and blend that better later on. So I just keep trying this technique with just spinning it in place, trying not to overwork the paper uh, since it's such a thin paper. And then to get the bigger circles, I'm just holding the center, one tip right in the center, and then wrapping the rest of the brush around the outer edge to kind of get a, a larger bubble or a larger circle. So holding one edge on the very center and taking the rest of the brush all the way around. And that gives me these larger circles that are probably about an inch, inch and a quarter. And then I'm just gonna make a couple of them go off the page over here just by swiping in a round motion. And I think I'm gonna do one here at the top as well. 
And now I'll go in and drop in more colors and just start blending these. They're really dark at first, but I go back in and add a lot more water uh, to lighten them up. And of course, when they completely dry, uh, they lighten much more than what they look like on the page at this moment. So on this side, I'm really going to load up my brush uh, with water and paint and see what that thickness looks like if I just run it flat. Um, so this is just directly into the glitzy, which these are kind of on the shiny side. It kind of has a little bit of a metallic uh, look to these colors. Um, and so I'm just going to put some of those colors out here with the three fourths inch side to really be able to see the thickness of the brush and um, how much paint it can hold. This brush is a little thick, so these small pans um, are a little bit harder to get that brush completely into those pans, but it still worked. So here's where I'm adding more of that water to just dilute out these circles a little bit. Um, they dry really nicely in the end but I definitely needed to do more blending here. So I'm going back in and adding a lot more water to thin these out a little bit. So since this is like a swatch book for me, I'm using a pigment pen here, Millennium, I believe it's by Zig. And I'm writing the palette that I'm using. So it's Jane Davenport brand. I got it at Michael's. The palette is the Glitzy palette and then the um, paint brushes. So this is what my palette looks like. It's been used and abused a bit over time, um, but the Princeton Neptune round brushes are itemized. So I know which one I used. The paper is holding up really well, despite the amount of water that I'm using on these experiments. This one kind of has that seaweed look. And then this one is after I diluted everything, the circles that were with the 3 4 inch flat brush, again, by Princeton Neptune. So I'll put the links for all of these products below. And if you enjoy videos like this, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.